Well, hey, welcome back to another edition of Bethel Backstage. And we are excited today to, to be joined with uh, Pastor Steve DeWitt. And we have uh, two of our pastors uh, on staff today who are joining us. With, with uh, We're really excited about this. We have Pastor Jared Bryant. Hey, Jared. Hey. Jared, give us, give us your, uh, your title, what you do, uh, you know, kind of outside coronavirus world, and then what you're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, so pastor of community life and missions. So I lead uh, our global missions efforts, uh, also lead our young adult ministry, so college age ministry. Um, lately been working on, obviously since the coronavirus crisis, local outreach. Um, and then preach from time to time. Yeah, so. doing a great job with that too. And then I'm most excited to uh, announce uh, this person to our church because uh, he's got a new title. We're very proud of him. I get to introduce to you Dr. Stephen Ganchow. And at home, they're all giving it up for your uh, academic prowess. Welcome. Thank you, glad to be here. How does it feel to be a doctor? Like a millstone has been removed from my neck. <laughs> Fantastic. It was a, it's a large undertaking, and I'm glad that it's done, and I'm glad to be able to transition forward now. Well, we're so glad to have you uh, with us, and, and obviously you've been a big blessing to our church. I know we would all echo that. We've got a topic today of uh, spiritual gifts. We're back in Romans. How great does it feel to be back in Romans? Steve, I just want to ask you this. You're preaching kind of back in the rhythm. I know we're still in a pandemic, but you're back in the rhythm of Romans. And what was that like for you this week to just prepare the next couple of verses of where we've been as a church. Kind of like coming back to an old friend uh, that I hadn't seen in a while. Uh, it, felt, it felt good. I mean, that's the bread and butter of our church is the verse by verse exposition. And so to be able to have a text and work through it and explain yeah. it and apply it, that's, uh, that's how we roll around here. So it felt great. I think it felt really good for people who are uh, you know, participating online, whether they were on their phone or in their, uh, watching on their TV. Um, I heard a few comments uh, from friends, maybe not on the chat feed, but people who are like, it feels like I'm walking through the lobby of the church again, where it's like I hear the, te the verse by verse exposition. And uh, we had a lot of people who were online even. I don't know if you guys saw any comments of people who are just excited to be back in Romans. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. And I would say, too, that as we've watched our social media feeds over the last couple of weeks, the, the communication and interaction continues to grow. Today in particular, Pastor Jared and I were talking just during the sermon. We were able to interact a little bit. The chat feed today in particular was higher than we've seen in weeks past. So lots of encouragement around this. Yeah, we love being a church that is centered around God's word. And so today we came to Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. Those are the, the next sort of passage that we're in uh, here in Romans. And, and Paul talks about spiritual gifts. And so Pastor Steve, you just finished preaching uh, right behind us. This is literally backstage <laughs> at Bethel, uh, and we're coming from Crown Point here. You just finished uh, the, the sermon, and uh, the main point was use your gift. Use your gift. Why, why is it, Steve, do you think that people don't use their gifts? If we just be very basic on that, why don't people use their gifts? You know, that's a great question. I, I suppose it would be, you know, there's varying reasons. I think there's a lot of uh, people that, A, are, are perhaps ignorant of the fact that God has gifted them. And maybe today's message was like, wow, I, I didn't realize that I have a role to play. Uh, I think other people are maybe fearful and you know there's a fear of failure and so I don't want to I don't want to do something unless I know I'm going to be good at it well here's the great news you're going to be good at something uh, the Holy Spirit has equipped you to be good at something and probably there's you know a lot of uh, I don't know if laziness is the right term but if you look at what Paul's exhortation is he he basically is is saying steward the gift because our tendency is maybe to to sit on it, you know, to, to wait for just the perfect time to use it, maybe then I will. And, you know, Paul is, uh, his, his uh, clarification on the list, each, each of the gifts is, is basically to do it, use it, and uh, do it well. Right. You had this great phrase that you even stopped and pulled back on and said, I wish I would have written it down. Well, I wrote it down, and we're going to record it right here so that you get all the, 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 the quote credits here. You said, uh, it's way, there's way more blessing in the church serving in the church than observing in the church. And maybe that came across to people who are stuck at home today, who are unable to be a part of the body of Christ on the weekends, Right? So we can't be a part of, you know, sometimes we think about serving or using our gifts in the context of 
um, shaking hands at the door, making coffee, or, or you know, uh, creating a welcoming atmosphere here in the church building. And the reality is that a lot of people are stuck in a pandemic at home. And the first question when we moved church to online that I had in my heart was, how do we encourage people to use their spiritual gifts mm -hmm. in a pandemic? Jared, do you have any thoughts about how people can do something while they're stuck in quarantine, using their gifts, not being lazy, as Pastor Steve has encouraged us not to be, but to go for it? For sure. Yeah. Uh, I, I think... Uh, Creatively, uh, you know, one of the things that happened weeks ago, uh, for all of you listening and, and uh, watching, uh, you know, Pastor Steve, you mentioned Newt Rockney and his speech, you know, win one for the Gipper, old Notre Dame football coach. And Pastor Steve kind of gave Bethel Church staff a win one for the Gipper speak, speech weeks ago, which was this could be our church's shining moment to give God glory right. in our church and in our community. And so what an incredible moment in a pandemic that we can use our spiritual gifts to minister to one another and minister in the community. So in a stay at home order, I think there are still a number of opportunities to serve one another. Now, it, albeit it has to be digitally, creatively, uh, in the community, there, there are a number of things. And eventually, you know, hopefully shortly, these restrictions will be lifted and we can even use these gifts in other ways. But what an incredible opportunity. This could be, in many ways, our shining moment to bring God glory as a church using our gifts. Yes. You know, I, you think about the seven that Paul lists in Romans 12. Um, you know, you could, you could somewhat argue that prophecy and, and maybe teaching require the gathered church, but the others are not at all limited to, um, you know, a, a kind of gathering. They, right. they, in fact, some of them would be best not in a gathering and are much more interpersonal, uh, maybe in the community, in the neighborhood, on the phone, you know. So those gifts are not quarantined. Mm -hmm. We can say it that way. Right. And the spirit can still use them in spite of our situation. Mm -hmm. And it might be the type of thing where now that we have a different situation than what we've been routinely accustomed to over decades, we are in a situation where we have to creatively use our imagination and see where is this spirit actually using my influence in the body of Christ? St Stephen, have you seen anyone in the community or, or in the circles that you run with who's creatively uh, using their spiritual gifts right now? Yeah, and maybe even before I jump to that, I would, I would almost say, I think that there are people that have been very uniquely gifted by God and they don't recognize that the gift that they have is a spiritual gift. Like they re they're doing these amazing things. They're leading in administrative ways. They're, they're engaging, but they don't recognize that this is actually a part of the spiritual gift that they have. Um, in terms of people that are actively serving, one of the things that has impressed me in uh, my own neighborhood is people that are willing to like talk in a way that they hadn't before. We have some neighbors in particular who they stay inside, they never come outside. And yet, as they've had more kids, like there are kids that want to come and play in their yard, they've come out and engaged in a way, like they've just, they come out and talk. They never did before. In terms of our own church, I think of folks like uh, the Mirabellas. Um, some of you know the, Mirabella, the Mirabellas, they provide a lot of administrative oversight to our Celebrate Recovery ministry. Our Celebrate Recovery ministry still is continuing to meet, albeit digitally. Uh, Calvin, our director of CR, he continues to provide content, and yet groups still have to function, people still have to be assigned as they want to come in. Folks like the Mirabellas continue to do amazing work directing people into the places and ministry that they need to go. And these are just, I mean, that, this is but a microcosm of what's happening in our church on a whole. Yeah, I think about uh, the... the uh, one of our members who played keyboards today in our, our service is a HP attender, uh, one of our good friends. Um, her name's Laura. And Laura has been using her spiritual gift. I don't think she even knew that she had the spiritual gift until we had to turn everything digital. But she's been gathering people in our community to online events for like trivia nights and game nights. And they've been on the surface, these social events, but she has such a good way. The reason I call this a spiritual gift is because she has a way of turning the social moment into a, hey, I just wanna take a second and just ask you guys, what is God encouraging you with this, this season? And we have this incredible discussion in the middle of trivia. And uh, you see those gifts, and I think sometimes people have to call out those gifts and say, hey, I see God using this in your life. Um, I'm curious if we could talk about this for a second. How much of spiritual gifts are our own natural abilities 
and how much of it is just the, the way that God has chosen to infuse his grace in our lives through us, how much are we actively participating in that? How much of that is just the Holy Spirit passively using that? Steve, do you have any thoughts about that, that sort of balance? How does that work? And maybe it's a mystery that we can't understand. But. Uh, mystery might be a good word. And, and frankly, there's different schools of thought on that. Um, you know, I, use, I shared the Wayne Grudem quote, which would suggest more of a kind of a, a sanctified use of natural gifts in spiritual gifts. And then there's other very qualified writers that um, would argue that a, a natural gift and a spiritual gift do not, you know, uh, they're, they're, they, don't, they don't share the space. So I, I, in my opinion, God can use whatever he wants. And our posture should be not so much like I've got natural gifts and so I'm not going to use these to, to bless the church. I'm going to really just try to focus on these spiritual gifts, but rather to have that, hey, God, all that I am, all that I can, I want you to use all of me in whatever way that, that you would like. And in some ways, we don't have to figure out, now, was that my natural gift that was blessing those people or was that my spiritual gift that was blessing those people? It's, it's more of a, just a joy that God, that God uses, uses me. I think the danger in... If there's a danger in it, the danger is in um, uh, leaning on our natural gifts because those we've known our whole life and not exploring what God might want us to do um, in, in terms of our spiritual gifting and to um, maybe put too much stock in, in natural gifts. So, because, you know, there's three chapters in Corinthians. It's listed in five places. The exhortation is to use them. I think the Apostle Paul would say to the church, this is a way bigger deal than, than you realize. Most of you are not operating with an awareness of spiritual gifting mm -hmm. at all like I think you should. I think that would be his admonition to the modern church. And there, you know, Steve, you mentioned, you compared uh, the infinity stones and, and spidey sense with spiritual <laughs> gifts, which, which appealed to my, the inner nerd within me. Uh, but there, there is this fascination with spiritual gifts and particularly, you know, some spiritual gifts that uh, I've heard this false dichotomy. Well, these are the supernatural spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. Well, they're all supernatural. Yeah. Th and that's, the, that's the, the point is that these are things we cannot do apart from the empowering work of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do uh, in and of ourselves. And, and you know, use the, you use the illustration when you were younger, speaking in public terrified you. And God has, has gifted you to preach and, and use exhortation. And so I think it's things that we just cannot do in and of ourselves. Yeah, and if I could, if I could just dovetail on that, because I think that's an important distinction. I'd like our church to understand that mm. gifts are they are spirit given. Holy, the Holy Spirit is the one who gives the gifts. They are supernatural in their effect, mm -hmm. and this is where I think if if that's misunderstood. Mm -hmm. You know, we think you know here we have uh, Stephen Ganshaw, our resident Batman. Uh, <laughs> You know, we, we, we can envision ourselves as, as a kind of superhero mm -hmm. with a gift, which is kind of the yeah. Corinthian way of looking at it. Like, hey, look at me. I've got this particular yep. gift. Whereas I think the Bible's teaching is that we have these gifts. Mm -hmm. The supernatural effect is not dependent on me, but on God using that particular gift. Mm -hmm. And that effect is something that the, that the Holy Spirit does. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I can't like glory in my gifting that much, or even in the effect, because I see it depends on God for that to happen. Yeah, I wanna to come to you, Stephen, because I wanna ask the question, just on the tail of what you said, uh, why, why do you think, you, you work a lot with counseling and, and a lot of people who are maybe in their own head, yeah. um, kind of having a, a counseling take on that. Why do you think it is that we tend to equate our spirituality with the effects of our spiritual gifting? Hmm. You know, there, there tends yeah. to be, I think you had said uh, in your sermon that um, we, we conflate these two ideas, that if I'm, you know, I think you said preaching with a grumpy heart some days, guilty, I've done that. I've and only done it once. Lord, you'll, well, man, if, <laughs> man, Lord, forgive me. Yeah. But uh, definitely know that the Lord uses those moments. And so there's this disconnect in, in my experience between my spiritual state and yet I'm so prone to think I can control the mm -hmm. outworking of my spiritual gifts if I can control the inward nature of my spirit. Yeah. Why do you think we're pro prone to fall down that error? What would you encourage us 
as a way out of that? Yeah, that, that's a really insightful question. And I think a lot of it comes back to, you know, we, we wrap a lot of things up in how we feel all the time. And when we feel like we're having a bad day, when we feel like uh, things are not going the way that we want in our world, we're very prone to act out of our feelings. So if we have a spiritual gift that is heavily dependent on interacting with other people, and we are not feeling the gospel in us as much that day, we're, we're not going to be as prone to want to use that spiritual gift. In fact, we're going to be prone to want to back away from it and not engage with it at all because there's that conflict within us. There's the gospel telling us the thing that we should be doing, but I'm really not feeling it today. And I would always encourage someone to take an objective step back then and remind themselves of the truth that they already know. That remind, I mean, too often what happens is we fall into believing lies about ourselves that aren't true, that because I'm not feeling it, I'm not worthy of the gospel. Because I'm not feeling God's love today, I can't pour out God's love today. And we have these conflicting thoughts that wrestle within us. And it's a matter of being willing to believe what we know is true and not succumb to the feelings, especially the negative ones. Would it be fair to say, uh, Steve, I'll end with you on this one, maybe the last word. Would it be fair to say that sometimes we're prone to overfocus upon our own gifts because in some sense they may be personal to us? We may feel like God has gifted us this way. In some sense, we are the gift. When maybe the Bible wants us not to focus on the gift, but maybe the fruit of the Spirit instead? Hmm. Well, as I said in the message, we... we we tend to equate people's godliness with the effect of their ministry and um, the fruits are the fruits are maturity love joy peace patience kindness goodness these are indications of christ likeness and uh, i'll just tell one quick story uh, that from my life where when i was in my my mid-20s i i worked for a christian college i would travel and speak at all these christian chapels uh, christian school chapels and different i don't know Team things, and I had I really only had one message, but man, I had that message down. I had it down. I had done it. I had done it over and over and over and over again. And I was in Flint, Michigan, and uh, I Flint, Michigan. Actually, I was in Flint or Midland, up there somewhere in the hand. And I was at a Christian school, and I was speaking in chapel, and uh, I didn't pray before the chapel. I didn't even think about it. Why, did, why would I need to? I know, this, I know this one down by heart. And I did that chapel, and it was, to this day, it stands out to me as one of the emptiest spiritually, like it was a vacuum. The room was, there was no dynamic, there was no power, there was nothing. And in my heart, I was seized with um, guilt about my dependency on my own gift. And um, I remember I kind of rushed out of, uh, out of the building as quick as I could, and I stopped at the door, and I prayed to God, and I said, God, I will never do that again. Yeah. And maybe in the last 25 years I have once or twice, mm. I don't know, but generally I pray before every speaking opportunity, God, use the gift that mm. you have given to me. Yeah. And I, I do that somewhat as a safeguard in my own heart, as a reminder that... Yep. Whatever happens here is not, is not me. It's dependent on God's blessing. Mm-hmm. And I am privileged to do it. It's yeah. a gift God gave to me. And um, I think that that has been helpful to me over the many years of, uh, of doing it. So I just encourage our people, you know, God has a plan for you. He's gifted you. There's a purpose. There's something you can do that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Do it. And if you fail trying, keep trying and find that place that God would have you. Um, and our whole church would be blessed. I mean, if we mobilized everybody, just fired up about spiritual gifts and using their gifts, what a difference that would, that would make. Yeah, well, what a great encouragement for all of us. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Bethel Backstage. We hope that you will use whatever gift the Lord has given you to be put to work in the body. Just do something. We'll see you.